Sweet. I'm doing well, very can, well. Can you tell us a little bit about your career and uh, how you got started in horse racing? Well, I, uh, when I was 15 years old, I uh, started going to the track. I wanted to be a baseball player, but uh, I was too small for baseball. So I decided to go to the, to the racetrack to try because my father was a jockey and I didn't even know him. He was in another country. And then I kind of gave me the idea of, uh, of uh, trying to, um, to do something because I, I wasn't that good in school. So then I started at the age of 15 years old to go to the track and learn and take care of horses and learn how to gallop. And then uh, two years later, I got my license. I started riding in, in my country and in Panama, and um, I became the leading rider over there. And Mr. Fred Hooper, uh, he owned horses in the United States. He, he, he heard about me and, and he sent for me and he gave me a contract for three years. Okay. So. I've been here ever since. You know, I came here when I was 19. I did very well. I won a lot of big races and jockey standing and uh, Eclipse Awards and something that I uh, that I'm very proud of. You know, because it was a very for me it was a very difficult career because I had to fight weight most of my career, and it was hard. You know, that's I would say that I was probably the toughest thing that I had to do during my career. Yes. Well, you overcame a lot of challenges, and you know, we're from New York, so I grew up at Belmont, and I remember when I was a kid, and you know, Angel Cordero was the hero over there, but I had a friend named Sean, okay. who was the groom of Conquistador Cielo, Cavier, yes. he worked for Woody Stevens, yes. and he would always say, Lafitte, Lafitte, <laughs> and you know, I would go, oh, Cordero, but he was the person who opened my eyes to you, yeah. and I was a fan of Woody Stevens, Oh yeah. and those horses, can you tell us a little bit about the relationship with Woody, and how you was always come to the East Coast and ride those Well, uh, uh, I think uh, Woody and I, uh, we click up pretty good. He had a jockey called Eddie Maple, which right. he really uh, rode him a lot. And, uh, but every time that uh, Eddie Maple could not ride one of his good horses, he sent for me. Right. And I was very uh, appreciative of that right. because, uh, uh, because of him, I won my Kentucky Derby, my first Kentucky Derby, and the three Belmonts. So, uh, uh, it was a it was a big help, you know. You need a good horse, you need a good trainers, and uh, especially those those trainers that that have confidence in you. You you even feel even better riding for them. Right. Well, it's definitely a pleasure today to meet you, and man, we just you know words can't say. Man. And you know, right. and you know, right? Out of all the legendary career that you have, right? What's the what's the what's the best moment for you that you? Really well, there, there were there were a couple of moments that I could I would say that they were my biggest moment in my career. Uh, I think winning the Kentucky Derby and and winning uh, on a firm the uh, Jockey Club Gold Cup and when we beat uh, a spectacular beat. And uh, I remember in that race was a lot of I felt a lot of pressure more than in any other race because a firm was going for the uh, Horse of the Year. And the same thing for a spectacular beat. Chumeke was riding him, and uh, it was a lot of rivalry because uh, uh, Afin was from the from the west, and and the, and spectacular beat was from the east. So it was it was a uh, it was a lot of publicity, and I felt the pressure. Believe me, but I, I ended up riding a good race, and I won. So. I was very proud of that race. Who was who was your mentor? Uh, as early, a jockey? Yeah, early on. Well, as a jockey, I, I used to look look up to Bill Shoemaker, great writer and a good person, and I wanted to learn from him, learn how he was, you know. I uh, learned the way he, his, his attitude. Uh, he used to take things pretty good, you know, and I was, when I came to this country, I was uh, anything, Piss me off, you know. So I was always, I was always tied up, you know. And and you had to learn. I learned from him that, uh, you know, he goes around. You know, you just try to take things easy. Don't let things affect you because you have to keep riding right after that, you know. So and and I I I I learned that from him. And you know, one last question, right? The name of this program is the Real Players Inside the Backstretch. And you've been around a very long time in this business. How important is the men and women 
that take care of these horses every day, the groom, the hot walkers, the exercise riders? Oh, it is very important, you know, they get, they get to know the horses, they take care of them, and uh, they can help the trainer to tell them things about the horse that uh, the trainer ha had no pay attention to it. So they, it, they're very, very important to, uh, for, the, uh, for, the, for, for the horse. You know, it was a pleasure and an honor talking to you. All right, you're welcome. Thank Very you. good. All right.